Regarding, regarding the pyramid thinking, uh, is a nice way to think um, standardized by Barbara Minto. Uh, and it uh, teaches us uh, how to deal with problems. It let us to summarize facts, screening the most important ones, and to establish an order and a priority. So it's very important to have order and priority when we are going through a change of management. Um, and then involve the whole team. We can't run this process alone. So even if, if we are the best manager of the world, we cannot do it alone. We need a, a nice team and support. For this reason, one of the first thing to do to achieve the goal and make it last over time is to build a committed team to work with and to let all the other people around uh, to participate and be involved in the process. So if you are a good risk manager, you have to communicate and uh, engage everyone. Uh, let's make an example. You are a museum risk manager and you have to mm, do some work around and your team is working on best practice and emergency plan. During the process, you have to engage all the museum team from the director to the housekeeping staff to make it work. If you will do it, they will feel part of the project responsible for their task and they can help actually in the emergencies, understanding the hard work you have done So basically, if people understand what you are doing and why you are doing your job, they will be more respectful and collaborative. So they will be trained to think about the figure of risk manager as someone that is saving their own heritage, their own culture and their own money. That's very important. So now, uh, we can analyze in specific the different type of technology we can apply to risk management. And here you can see them divided in macro areas uh, with a relevance to risk management in percentage. So we have information and data processing, 65%. We have uh, VR, virtual reality, AR, augmented reality and data permanence. 10%, images and images processing, um, 25%. Obviously, this is uh, an indicative percentage. Okay, going deeper in the main specific te technology available, uh, we can see uh, which type of technology are part of the macro areas. So, for information and data processing, we have digitization of archives, collection and information. Uh, where for uh, digitization, we can um, store information, documents, images and so on, reports, uh, etc. The web, very important, geolocation, big data processing and artificial intelligence. Uh, for the other, uh, the second uh, macro area, we have uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, blockchain, NFTs. For image and image processing, we have computational calculation, gigapixel scanners and 3D scanners. So if you ask me what are the basic technology for risk management, I can reply you those that allow to know the assets and to preserve the information. And you can see them in bold in the slide. Uh, if you ask me what can we apply in addition, I can say you potentially all of them. They are useful. They can be very attractive, but they are not the base. So 
Um, here we can go deeper with some specification of the three basic technology used for risk management. Digitization of archives, collect, collection and information. The scope of this technology is the knowledge. Uh, it is used to become aware, to collect, to store and update the data on the analyzed cultural heritage, both content and container, and quickly search for, in, for information. Uh, these tools are typically softwares available on the market or built in-house. Then we have web. The scope of this technology is obviously the communication. Um, and uh, uh, it lets us to disseminate information, raise community awareness and facilitate research. Uh, the technology used are basically websites and portals for the purpose, built for the purpose, uh, through a digitization and communication strategy. And this is part of the communication skill of a risk manager. And the risk manager should have this type of skill to involve people and community and team. Uh, then we have geolocation. The scope of this technology is to record recallable and clean data. It uh, allows uh, to precisely study the position of assets, to identify the major environmental risks and to normalize data. It is usually an algorithm uh, embedded in the cataloging software. So now we can take a look on secondary technology with an example. Um, for example, we can uh, focus on damage recognition through computer vision, computational calculation and artificial intelligence. These three technology can be very useful as secondary technology for risk management. And we know very well this type of technology because we have uh, a section in our software dedicated to uh, damage recognition. Um, and so we can make an example. So um, computer vision and computational calculation allow to implement investigation that facilitate the detection of, the, of damages on the objects to be preserved. Uh, both in case of common risk, daily risk, and in case of exceptional events. They do not replace actually humans, but they speed up the investigation, they increase the objectivity, and they facilitate with the quantification of the damages. Um, SpeakArt has two of these three technologies. Uh, computer vision and computational calculation on image recognition. But we can do more. And in the future, applying an artificial intelligence algorithm to this calculation could help the process uh, much more and can give indication, for example, on the priority to secure the asset if we understand which are the most valuable assets, not only from an economical point of view, we know better how to deal with the, the objects and their risks. Uh, we can, with an artificial intelligence, identify the type of damage. In this moment, we don't identify the type of damage, but the position of the damage. Uh, the artificial intelligence could help to recognize the different type of dam damages, processing various information. And we can uh, measure the economic depreciation after damage with uh, uh, an algorithm like this. So here, uh, it could be very important from uh, uh, an insurance uh, point of view. So basically, now we go deeper uh, in uh, the Spicar case study. Uh, for the comparison algorithm. Uh, the scope is 
obviously to highlight the differences occurred over time between two different images processed with the software. The two different images are of the same object over time. So, for example, before and after an exhibition, before and after uh, a transport, um, maybe uh, during uh, some uh, exhibition or events uh, or after a, a, a natural event uh, that occurred. So, how we uh, go through this algorithm? With two high-resolution pictures, uh, shotted with a camera or a smartphone, um, and the software actually does a lot of things uh, by, their, by its own. Crops, rotate, uh, balances uh, in color, and overlaps uh, like the two images alone. Uh, this is very important because we, we have to help people to do less effort as possible to have the output. Uh, and the outputs are two. So we have a matching per percentage of the two images and four graphic outputs. Um, we can, with, the, with, with this type of algorithm, we can, we can recognize forgeries, damages, and spot natural decay. And this is an example. So in this slide, you can have um, a, an example of the image comparison of the, of the software. In the top left, you can see the primary digital fingerprint is a primary high resolution image. In the top, in the shot with a, an iPhone actually. In the top right, the secondary digital fingerprint shot um, four days uh, after uh, with a different type of um, smartphone. It is uh, a picture take, taken um, in a different moment of the day with different media uh, in, in, in a different way. And you can see in the second um, fingerprint, we have um, a lot of uh, wall around, frame and passepartout. And the software actually automatically elaborate the secondary image to match uh, the first one uh, and to be able to uh, compare them and to detect the differences. In the center, you can view one of the four output is a pixel, uh, is a pixel to pixel comparison uh, with the difference uh, highlighted. Uh, we had a little thread on the top right of the secondary digital fingerprint and uh, actually is very quick because uh, it's 30 seconds uh, and in this way we can really speed up the process because uh, uh, this is just a, an example but uh, we can detect differences up to a tenth of a millimeter so quite deep. Okay, um, securing cultural heritage, as I said before, is not a race, but a climb. Uh, you can reach the top only with a team, your team, that knows how to communicate, go on together and help each other. So basically, with uh, this uh, suggestion, I would say that the lesson is over. I thank you for your attention and I leave our contacts for question and clarification if you need it. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.